How are you doing, everybody? This is Russ Hodges along with Lon Simmons. We live this game of baseball every day, 365 days a year. But sometimes we need a reminder. Now tell me, Lon, did the Giants really win the pennant in the year 1962? Well, I think maybe we can let the Giants tell that story, Russ, but we have to go all the way back to April 10th at Candlestick Park in the first inning as the Braves and the Giants are playing. And center fielder Willie Mays steps up to the plate now. And the fans here today are seeing something they've never seen. Willie is wearing a batter's helmet this year. In previous years, he always wore the cap with the plastic inner lining. But at the request of manager Alvin Dark, he went for the full helmet. He wears it right over his baseball cap. Spawn throws to the giant center fielder. There's a swing and a long drive to deep left center field. And you can tell it. Bye-bye, baby! What a way to start off a season. One pitch, one home run. Well, that was sort of an indication, Russ, of how things were going to start, but it wasn't all offense as far as the Giants were concerned. There was some defense involved, too, so all we have to do is go to the ninth inning of that first game and listen. Joe Torrey's the batter, and he takes a call strike over the outside. Tommy Aaron at second base. Frank Bowling is at first. Nobody down. The Giants lead six to nothing. Here's the pitch. Fastball hit on the ground at Davenport at third. Over to second for one. Back to first. What a double play! Call him the kid with the golden glove for nothing. That started out to be a base hit, a hard smash to Davenport's left. That is the only time today that Marichal has needed something extra in the way of support, and he really got it there. And then still in April at Candlestick Park, after Mays hit a home run in the sixth off O'Toole, the Giants led 4-1 to one in Billy Pierce's first game. Then in the seventh, Pagan was on with two out when Cepeda came to bat. O'Toole with a new baseball, getting the sign. Stretches. Pagan leads at first. Here's the pitch. Pagan going again, and there's a long drive to left field, and you can tell that one. Goodbye. Orlando Cepeda gets his first home run of the year. A line drive over the left field fence, and the Giants now lead it by a score of six to one. April 14th, Candlestick Park against the Cincinnati Reds. Score tied in the third inning, 4-4 with one out, back-to-back -back home runs. One down. Base is empty. 4-4 ball game, bottom of the third. Next pitch to Cepeda. There's one. You can tell that goodbye. That's way out of here. Way back into the seats in left field as Cepeda gets his second home run. Orlando Cepeda really cracked one about five or six rows deep in the left field seat. He just waited on that pitch and mashed it. So the Giants are back out in front now, five to four. And then Philippe Alou got into the act. Ellis ready for the 1-0 pitch. Slow curve, and that one's hit deep to left field, going back and post, and tell him goodbye. Philippe Alou gets his first home run of the season as he timed a slow curve, waited on it, hit it over the left field fence. Then in the first game with the Dodgers at Candlestick Park, big Stan Williams pitching for Los Angeles, and Felipe Lou is up at the plate. One ball, no strikes, one down, bottom of the second. Roseboro's target, Williams' curveball has hit the deep center field, far back for it is fairly, far back, far back. Tell it bye-bye, baby! After a quick survey here in the radio booth, that is the farthest we have seen a ball hit to center field. It went into the extreme corner of the concrete bleachers. Well, you've worked, seen where Del Courtney's band sits. Well, it even went to the right of that. Had to go 430 feet. That was in the second inning. Then in the third inning, Jimmy Davenport. Williams throws one and one. Davenport hits a long high drive to deep left field. Moon is clear back and tell it. Bye-bye, baby. And more home runs to come. Willie Mays. Young left-hander Willard Hunter pitches to Willie Mays. There's a long high drive to deep left center field, and you can tell it by by baby.
Three home runs in consecutive innings by the Giants, but now let's go on the road and back to Pittsburgh at Forbes Field where the Giants are involved in a big Donnybrook. Bailey has had one out of two. Two down, top of the six, Bob Friend ready. The pitch over Bailey's head and all the way back to the screen, and Bailey turns to yell something out to Bob Friend, and we might have a little fun. Here come all the Giants out right now. And now Leopard grabs up Bailey around the neck, and we've got a real good one going. They got a real good one going. Bob Friend tries to throw a punch at Bailey. That's Leopard. Leopard jumped on Bailey when Bailey's back was turned. Bob Friend, as you recall, hit uh, Jack Sanford in the hand two seasons ago and sidelined him for six weeks. And that was a creaser if ever you've thrown one. It appears that they'd have to put everybody out of the game, so nobody's going to get thrown out. 3-1 pitch. Swung on and belted a long way to deep right field. And that ball is going back. You can tell it. Bye-bye, baby. Ed Bailey, after being low bridge, hits his fifth home run of the season. Way back into the lower deck of the right field stands. And the Giants lead 5-2. Well, that fight may have inspired the Giants, at least it inspired Don Larson, who came on in the sixth inning with one of the finest relief jobs of the year. Ten pitches and three outs against the Pirates. So there are two men down, and Roberto Clemente, who has been out with a virus out of the starting lineup tonight, is coming into pinch hit, and they really love this guy here in Pittsburgh. And they should. He delivers great ball for them. Now ready for the pitch by Larson. He throws to Clemente. Strike call, the fastball on the inside corner. Count is 0-1. The stretch by Larson. The pitch to Clemente. Swung on and missed, strike two, a curveball. Down is on two. Stu Miller loosens for the Giants along with Dick LeMay. Two on, two down, two strikes on the batter. The Giants leading five to two in the bottom of the sixth. As Larson has the sign from Bailey, who crouches low and outside. There's the pitch. He strikes him out swinging. Larson struck out the side on ten pitch balls. Three in a row to Leopard. Three out of four to Mazeroski. And three out of three to pinch hitter Bob Clement. So the pitchers, the regulars doing well, but until April 27th at Candlestick Park, not a single pinch hit for any one of the Giants who came off the bench to swing in the pinch. April 27th, Willie McCovey steps up with Davenport on at uh, second base, and the Giants down by two runs. There's the stretch now as Davenport leads. The one-and-one -one pitch. A long drive to deep right field. That one is going back there, and tell it goodbye. Willie McCovey becomes the first giant pinch hitter to deliver a hit, and it was a big one, a two-run homer, and the Giants are back in it, four to four. Well, you sometimes have to get runs and bunches. The Giants could do that, as against the Cubs at Candlestick Park, Willie Mays got a hold of a big one. Davenport, Marichal, and Chuck Hiller all ready to head for the barn if Mays can connect. A 2 and 0 oh count as Larry's into the windup. The pitch. May sends a long high drive to deep left field. Williams is going far back, far back. Hit it! Bye bye, baby, a grand slam! Well, Russ, you have to have the offense and the defense. And if you remember back to May 2nd at Candlestick Park against the Pittsburgh Pirates, the score tied 2 to 2 in the sixth, and Willie May is a bat. Francis winding to throw to Willie. Long high drive to deep left field. Tell it, bye bye, baby! Well, that was the bye-bye baby, all right, Russ. But Chuck Hiller, playing at second base for the Giants in the 62 season, came up with some fabulous defensive plays. This ball game he saved with two out and one on in the eighth inning. Here's Bob Skinner. Now Cepeda and Bailey have a conversation with Juan Marichal as big Bob Skinner is up here. He has homered, good for two runs, and has bounced to the box 
on his last two times at bat in the third and sixth. Always dangerous. He swings that big bat for you. The one and zero delivery. Bounding ball is hit wide at first base. Cepeda can't get it. Hiller does. Throws to Marichal in time. A fine play by Chuck Hiller. And the side is retired. Well, the very next day at Candlestick Park against the same Pittsburgh Pirates, Chuck Hiller shows he can go to the offense as well as the defense. Let's turn to the bottom of the eighth inning. Chuck Hiller is the giant batter now with runners at first and third and one out. Haddix looks around at the infield. Here's the pitch to Chuck Hiller. Swung on, base hit to right field. Davenport rounding second and holds as Pagan scores. Chuck Hiller landing a drive into right field for his third hit. Giants on top five to four. Well, Chuck Hiller delivering against the left-hand pitcher, Harvey Haddix. Now a left-hand batter, Russ. You'll remember this. May 10th at St. Louis as Willie McCovey is batting. Gibson checking with his catcher, Gene Oliver. Now he's up and they're ready. Throws two and two. McCovey swings, crash, tell it, bye, bye, baby. And I mean tell it, bye, bye, baby. That one went clear over the right field roof and disappeared down a street on its way to a hamburger joint. Well, that was on the way to a hamburger joint, as you said, Russ. The Giants were looking for bigger things than hamburger. They were looking for steaks. Let's take another look at the Cardinals against the Giants, this time at Candlestick Park. It's the ninth inning, and Juan Marichal and Chuck Hiller again team up to snuff out a Cardinal rally and give the Giants a 7-2 win. Now the top of the order coming up, and Kurt Flood will be the batter. This is a fellow that has himself a home run and a single, so things are getting a bit tense here. Three on. One out. Now the 0-2 wind-up of Marichal. Over the top with a fastball. It's hit up the middle. Hiller stops it. Tags second. Throws to first. A sensational play. A double play, and the ball game is over. Then at Candlestick Park, as those rowdy giants once again flex their muscles, it was against the New York Mets. And uh, Willie Mays had singled to drive in a run off Roger Craig, the situation getting tense as Orlando Cepeda came up to the plate. That'll bring on Orlando Cepeda. He is singled twice and flied out. Orlando waiting for Craig's first pitch. Mays at first, two men down. And Cepeda is hit by an inside pitch and runs all the way out towards the mound after being hit. Now everybody's gathered around out there. Willie Mays, Orlando Cepeda, we almost had a little scuffle of Cepeda. Ran straight towards the mound after being hit. Still had the bat in his hand. He and Craig exchanged unpleasantries. And now Cepeda is dragging two or three people with him. He's really after Craig. Manager Alvin Dark finally held on to him. And Cepeda really started to take off for Roger Craig. And Dark grabbed a hold of him and held him back. But good thing Alvin played football down at LSU. Boy, because no he, he really had to tackle foot on Orlando Cepeda. He had to tackle him pretty quick. Orlando really put his head down and started to go for Craig. Willie Mays uh, probably in high sympathy with Orlando because Craig decked Mays twice. Not too sure if I were Mr. Craig, if I'd want to say too much for Orlando. He'd let him pinch your head off. And more of that same situation, Mays at second. Roger Craig had thrown back there twice to try to pick him off. Shea bluffs now. Now a throw to second base, and Mays is back in. And now there, Jacon starts hitting Mays. Mays jumps on him, and Cepeda and Craig are at it. Cepeda and Craig, and Cepeda gets in a left hook. Boy, we've got a brawl at second base as Chacon started hitting Mays on top of the head as they were lying there. Mays picked Chacon up and threw him on the ground. Cepeda swung a left hook and almost decked Craig. We've got ball players all over there. Russ, I don't know what that was about. Mays slid into second, and Chacon just started hitting him on the head, and Mays picked Chacon up and threw him down on the ground. Cepeda came over and swung a beautiful left hook that nailed Roger Craig right on the button. Uh, Ron, I've seen some good ones, but this is the best when they get squared off individually like that. It's the first time I've ever seen Mays throw a punch. And after uh, Chacon hit him, Mays tagged him once and picked him up and bounced him around on the ground. Then Cepeda went for Craig and uh, gave him as good a left hook as I have ever seen. And all in all, uh, this one, of all I've ever seen, this was the best baseball brawl because there was no kidding around about this. There was no pushing, hauling, and, and tagging. They were really throwing uppercuts, and a lot of them were landing. And I don't think the Giants lost a single fracas. 
Well, the Giants might not have been named world champions for their fighting, but nevertheless, they were a fighting ball club. And back at Philadelphia, three days later, on May 30th, manager Alvin Dark showed that he wasn't afraid to take chances. In the bottom of the eighth, he walked the potential winning run, Tony Gonzalez, to first base with a runner at third. Let's listen to the action as Juan Marichal pitches to Jack Davis with a count one and two. Juan Marichal throws to Jack Davis, swing a line drive to Pagan, a great catch! He just hit a bullet toward left center, and Pagan went about six feet high to come down with that ball. Boy, that one was ticketed for extra base hits, probably a two-run double, but Pagan made the grab when the side is retired. Well, the great defensive save by Jose Pagan saved the ball game right there. The Giants went on to win it in the 12th inning, 4-3, to three, with Stu Miller relieving Marichal and getting credit for the victory. That was the first game of a doubleheader. It showed defense. The second game, the Giants went back to the offense again against Philadelphia as Tom Haller bats. Davenport leads. Here's the pitch to Haller. A swing and a high fly to deep right center field. Far back is Callison. And tell it, five, five, baby! Tommy Haller hits his fourth home run of the season. Clear down with the scoreboard in right center, just where the scoreboard juts out in right field, and then cleared the wall with plenty to spare. So the Giants lead it by a score of four to nothing, and Mike McCormick will be up at the plate. And Mike McCormick went on to win the ball game. Then the Giants invaded the polo grounds, their own home, for their first game on the 1st of June in 1962, a place that has seen a lot of fabulous hitting and playing. And let's see what Jimmy Davenport does in the seventh inning. Keen and Mays single. Cepeda struck out. A loose single to drive in a run. Haller walked. So the bases are loaded. One man down and a two-strike count on Jimmy Davenport. Hunter taking a long look at the sign. Now the left-hander takes his stretch. Runners leading from every station there. The two-strike pitch. Driven down the right field line. That's got a chance. And it's in for a home run. Tell it. Goodbye. Jimmy Davenport with a grand slammer just inside the right field foul pole into the upper deck. Well, that was a big home run for Jimmy Davenport, but just a day later, another big one. The second game of a doubleheader at the Polo Grounds. Score tied in the eighth, 4-4. Four and four. Stu Miller on first, Harvey Keene at the plate. Keene waiting. Pitch to Harvey. Swung on, line drive foul to right field. Harvey was trying to take a shot at that right field corner. Miller standing close to first. Anderson throws. Keene swings. Here's a high fly to right field. It's got a chance. And tell it bye-bye, baby! <laughs> Harvey Keene gets his second home run of the season into the upper deck of the right field stands and puts the Giants ahead 6-4. to four. Then late in June, Lonus Edgar Bailey got himself into a fine streak of hitting home runs, this one very dramatic, with Cincinnati leading and his old pal Joey J, a former battery mate, on the mound. Bases loaded, Ed Bailey at bat. Bailey batting for Sanford here in the seventh. Davenport doubled. Pagan singled him to third. Haller walked to load him up. One or nothing count on Ed Bailey. Outfield deep and around to the right. The 1-0 pitch. A long drive. Hit to right field. That one's going back. A grand slam for Ed Bailey. Ed followed his grand slam with a couple more big home runs for the San Francisco Giants. Let's see if he can get four in one week on June the 30th against Art Mahaffey and the Phils. So here is Lawless Edgar Bailey to swing the bat against the Philadelphia Phils. He is grounded out in his only previous attempt. Cepeda leads at first. A half he comes set, throws. Bailey hits a long high drive to deep right field. Callison goes back and tell it bye-bye, baby. Well, a dramatic home run by Ed Bailey as he was really in his streak. Let's go to the 4th of July at Candlestick Park, and the Giants decided to have some fireworks. Billy O'Dell, one of the tough competitors for the Giants, pitches his way out of a jam in the 6th inning, goes on to win the ball game 8-3. Giants leading the Mets 5-2. Frank Thomas is at second base. Joe Christopher at first. O'Dell has another tough situation here. He throws to Hickman, a curveball. It's ripped to Davenport, who falls, tags third, straightens up, throws to first. In time, a whale of a double play. 
Well, great defense again, but now let's go back to the offense. One of the great Dodger killers, Harvey Keene. As the Giants lead 4 to nothing against the Dodgers, Harvey comes to bat. Jerry Wines throws 3-2. Keene swings, line drive, base hit in the left field corner. Harvey, here comes Hiller. Here comes Haller. Jack Sanford pumping around third on his way in. And the Giants lead it 7 to nothing. That was July 7th at Candlestick. Now let's go to July 16th at the Polo Grounds. Rookie Bob Garibaldi debuted sensationally the day before, but this, even a better performance. Chacon is on at third base. Ashburn is on at first. The double steal possibility, of course, is here also. As Garibaldi looks in to get his side. And listen to these fans trying to rattle Garibaldi. He delivers to the plate to Keneal, who swings, and here's a looping fly ball into short center. Mays is in. Hooray for Garibaldi. He got the side out. And here is Orlando Cepeda to come over and pat the guy on the back. Jose Pagan jumping up and down, and Alvin Dark out there, too, to congratulate him. One pitch. The Giants out of the woods, and the ball game is in the clubhouse. And the Giants win that one 3-2. to two. Now another great relief job. This one by Bob Bolin in Milwaukee as the Giants win it 4-3. to three. One man away, runners at first and third, and Bolin loosening up out there. Bolin making his 21st appearance. They started three times, completed one. 4-0 record, has an earned run average of 3.75, and he'll be facing Del Crandall. Pagan and Hiller back in double play position. Davenport close to third to keep Hank Aaron close. Bob Bolin ready. The pitch to Crandall, swung on, grounded to Pagan at short. Throws to Hiller for one, back to first base. Double play, it's all over. The Giants have won it. Four to three as Bob Bolin came in to get the job done. Well, Russ, let's switch back to Candlestick Park again. The date is August 9th. It's the bottom of the sixth versus the New York Mets. The Giants lead two to one, and then the power goes to work. Zepeda, who has flied to left field twice, will be up now. Number 30, Orlando the Giants Zepeda. lead the Mets two to one. And Miller sends the next one in. Cepeda sends a high drive down the right field line, slashing toward foul territory, and that one is gone. Tell it bye-bye, baby. A home run for Cepeda. Up into the wind, down in the right field corner, and the Giants lead 3-1. to one. The Giant batter will be Tommy Haller. Davenport has his second hit. The batter number five, Tom. The Giants have their number seven. The Mets have three as the Giants lead three to one. Now Matty Alou leads at second base. Haller has struck out and walked. Miller throws. Haller swings. Here's a long drive to right field. Backboard is Woodling. Tell it bye-bye, baby. That was the power, but you have to have the pitching. Jack Sanford had it that day with his 15th win. We'll hear more from Jack later as he's on a sensational win streak. Now let's go to more power. August 11th at Candlestick Park. Willie McCovey against Don Drysdale. It's three and it's two with two down. And the Dodgers lead three to two. And Alou is at second and Odell is at first. McCovey waiting on the three-two pitch from Don Drysdale. Who has struck out seven giants so far. And got his sights set on number eight. Drysdale is ready. He winds, throws. McCovey hits a long drive and fell it by. One of the big thrills in the history of Candlestick Park to see Willie McCovey put the Giants ahead five to three. Billy Pierce had pitched sensationally up to then as McCovey pinch hit for Pierce. Stu Miller came on and Miller delivered key relief work. So the Dodgers very much alive as they have the tying runner at first base and nobody out. And the big man mountain, Frank Howard, up to swing the bat. Miller checks the runner at first. Throws to Howard. A fastball is hit to Pagan at short. Over to Hiller for one. Back to first. Call it to a double play. Two men down. Ronnie Fairley, the batter now. Miller throws to Fairley, who taps it towards shortstop. Pagan has to hurry. Comes up, throws. In time, and the ball game is over. And the Giants have won it by the score of 5-4. to four. 
All season, Jose Pagan beating you with the glove. This day, August the 12th at Candlestick Park, off big Stan Williams in the fourth inning, a triple to bat them to a win. Stan Williams working with Alou on at first. Philippe is two for two today. He's waited at first as Haller slide to center, and Hiller was called out on strikes. Now Pagan is up here. And the stretch by Williams, and he lobs the throw over to Ron Fairley again. Not a real pickoff move, just something to let Alou know that he's aware that Philippe is over there. Alou is running. The pitch is lined into left center field. It's in between them. Alou will score. That ball bounces to the fence. Pagan is digging into second. He may try for three. He's headed for third. Wells with the relay, no throw, Pagan's in with a triple. And the Giants beat the Dodgers 5-1. to one. The heroes were many for the Giants. Let's go to August 23rd, the Mets at the Polo Grounds in New York. The Giants have lost 6 out of 7, and then Ernie Bowman starts us on a five-game win streak. Leading off with the Giants inning number 5, the second baseman Ernie Bowman will be followed by Juan Marichal and then by Harvey Keane. Ernie Bowman, who grounded out to first unassisted his first time, is up. With New York leading, one to nothing. The young left-hander throws to the plate. Bowman swings, here's a line drive deep to left field, and tell it bye-bye, baby! Ernie Bowman homering into the left field stands for the first home run of his major league career. That was only part of the dramatics for Ernie Bowman that day. Let's switch now to the top of the tenth. Orsino at second, Pagan at first, two down, top of the tenth, a one-to-one -one ball game. Orsino and Pagan ready to crank up and go here. Peniel trying to move in behind Orsino. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Ground ball, up the middle, base hit. Coming in to score, Orsino going to third, Pagan, and Bowman has driven in his second run, the Giants lead it 2-1. to one. September 3rd, the Giants try to break a 10-game Los Angeles streak at Dodger Stadium. They've lost 10 in a row to the Dodgers in L.A. as they send Willie Mays to bat against Stan Williams in the third inning. Willie Mays up here drew a walk his first time. Runners at first and third with now one man out. Stan Williams takes the stretch for the pitch to Mays. A long high drive hit to left field. That one's going way back. Snyder back near the wall. Tell it goodbye. Willie Mays with number 42 drives in three runs here. The Giants lead it four to one. A high, towering shot over the 370-foot mark. Well, Willie Mays got the punch going, but another streak was going as Jack Sanford tries for his 20th victory of the year. And let's turn to the ninth inning as Sanford pitches to Johnny Roseboro. And it's now a seven to three ball game with two men out. The batter will be John Roseboro. Two down, base is empty, two runs in. Giants lead it seven to three. Jack Sanford just one out away now. Right hander winds, here's the pitch. Fouled off the foot of Roseboro, strike one. Oh, one count to Roseboro. Here's the pitch bounded to Hiller. This could be it. Hiller has it. Throws the first. That's all. The Giants win it. A first win for the Giants in Dodgers Stadium. Jack Sanford wins his 14th in a row. His 20th win of the season. And the Giants have broken a 10-game losing streak in Los Angeles. The Giants and Dodgers split the next two. The Dodgers winning 5-4 and the Giants 3-0 as Marichal and Bolin combined for a shutout. That set the stage for great dramatics. On the 6th of September, in the ninth inning, with the score tied, Orlando Cepeda drew a base on balls off Ron Peronoski. The Giants went ahead 6-5, and blue-eyed Harvey Keene came to bat. One and two count to Harvey. Bases loaded, two men down, 6-5. to five. The Giants lead top of the ninth. The windup and the pitch. Line drive, base hit into left center field. That's going to go clear to the wall. Two-run score. Cepeda's around third. He's coming in to score, and Keene has himself a double. And the throw gets by Roseboro, and Keene goes to third base. Harvey Keene ripping a solid liner into left center field. For a double to score three runners. And the Giants wind up winning that one 9-6. to six. Now on September 11th, another dramatic highlight. Pittsburgh at Candlestick Park, top of the ninth, as Jack Sanford tries to tie a major league record of 16 wins in a row. 2 to nothing, San Francisco, top of the ninth. Don Clendenin at first. Schofield waiting on the 2-0 pitch. Sanford throws. Schofield bounds it to the right side. Cepeda flips to Sanford, and the ball game is over. Jack Sanford has won 
his 16th in a row in shutout style. Russ, in answer to your question at the start of this tape, we were talking about did the Giants win the pennant? Well, the last game of the season and all the dramatics wrapped up in this one is San Francisco hopeful of a Dodger loss and a Giant win. Ed Bailey is at the plate, and Ed looks like he hits one, then he doesn't, then he does. Let's listen. Whitey Lockman, Wes Westrom, facing up and down in the third and first base coaching lines, respectively. Crowd sitting in anticipation, waiting for some fireworks. The pitch, there's a swing and a long drive. That might be the fireworks. It's deep in the right field. It is foul by inches. Full count with one out to Big Ed. Farrell into the motion. Here it is. There's a swing, another drive. Way back in the right field. That one is going. It is gone for a home run. Well, Houston tied it at one and one, but then, Russ, you'll recall this. Willie Mays batting in the eighth inning and more dramatic. As Farrell is uh, warming up for the bottom of the eighth inning, Lloyd Fox, the very fine organist here at Candlestick Park, who uses so much showmanship, is suggesting faintly, you know, putting in the subtle hint as he's playing Bye Bye Baby. As Willie Mays, Willie McCovey, and Ed Bailey will face Dick Farrell in the bottom of the eighth inning with a score tied here at one and one and tied at the end of five innings at Dodger Stadium, nothing to nothing, the cards against the Dodgers. The entire 162 games wrapped right up here today on the West Coast at Dodger Stadium and here at Candlestick Park. Here's Farrell winding. He throws to Mays. Willie swings, slaps it foul, deep to right field. On one pitch, Mays hits with a long way. Tell it, five, five, baby! in orbit. That's as long a home run as he's ever hit in his career. Hit far back up into the left field seats and the Giants lead 2-1. to one. May's 47th home run. So Lloyd Fox really uh, was psychic on that one as he played bye-bye baby before Mays came up to the plate. Well, we had dramatics in 62. You want an oddity? Willie Mays hit the first pitch he saw in the season for a home run off Warren Spahn. He hit the last pitch he saw in the regular season off Dick Farrell for a home run. Now let's go to the ninth inning of that same ball game, the last day of the season. Billy Goodman up. Stu Miller pitching a two and two count. Now the delivery. Here's a swing and a miss. Two to one. They haven't won anything yet, but they're still alive. A tremendous thriller winding up here at Channel Stick Park as Sue Miller got the side out in order, and the Giants have won their 101st ball game of the season. Two runs, nine hits, no errors. One run, seven hits, and no errors. The crowd didn't leave then. And as they were doing at Kizar Stadium, they were listening to you, Russ, as you were explaining what was going on down at Chavez Ravine. Simmons checks with the rosin bag and fiddles around. He knows the importance of this pitch. So does Gilliam. So do the some 50,000 fans at Dodger Stadium. He pops up to Javier. We have a playoff. Well, Lon, you've proven one thing to me. In 1962, at least the San Francisco Giants tied for the pennant. Well, they certainly did, Russ. If you're still not convinced, let's go to tomorrow and the playoffs. Good idea. In that first game of the playoff, home runs by Davenport, Cepeda, two by Willie Mays, and a bases loaded double by Pagan. And Billy Pierce went into the ninth inning, leading eight to nothing. Two outs and Frank Howard at bat. One ball, two strikes. Giants leading eight to nothing here in the top of the ninth. Two out and the base is empty for the Dodgers. Billy Pierce won the one and two pitch. Swung on and missed. He struck him out. And the Giants have won it as Pierce fashions 
A shutout on a three-hitter. And the Giants have won the first game of the playoff. Pierce is mobbed as he leaves the field. What about that second game, Lon? Oh, forget it, Russ. I'm trying to convince you the Giants won the pennant. Let's go on to the third one. All right. This is down to Chavez Ravine. The Dodgers leading in the top of the ninth inning by a score of 4-2. to two. Matty Alou at bat as a pinch hitter for Don Larson. Matty Alou waiting as Ed Roebuck winds the pitch. Line drive, base hit into right center field. Matty Alou hitting the first pitch and singles to center. So the Giants have a shot at it. Matty was forced by Harvey Keene. McCovey batted for Hiller and drew a base on balls. Philippe Alou also walked. They were loaded. May singled. One run came in, and the Giants trailed by one, four to three. And here is Orlando Cepeda with a chance to tie it or win it. Now the wind-up for the pitch to Cepeda. A fly ball hit to deep right. Fairley's going back. He makes the catch. Here comes Bowman tagging. Here's the throw. It's going to be close, but Bowman scores, and it's all tied up. Then with that Bailey batting, there was a passed ball. Mays went to second, so Bailey drew an intentional pass. And that set the stage for Jim Davenport. Three and one count to Davenport. Jimmy checks the bat. Waits. The base is loaded. Two out. Stan Williams with a three-one count. Big right-hander ready. Here's the pitch. Ball four. He walked him, and that forces in the lead run. Davenport goes to first as Williams walks. Davenport Alou comes in. The Giants lead it five to four. And the Giants with a chance to get some more runs. As the bases remain loaded, they might need insurance going into the bottom of the ninth inning. And Jose Pagan, the batter. And Jose Pagan up here. Jose is two for four. Ron Paranowski with a one and one count. Here's the pitch. Ground ball to second base. For right, follows it. Throws to second, not in time, and a run scores. Mays comes in. That proved to be a big run because there in Chavez Ravine, the Dodgers are very tough. So Billy Pierce had been the hero of the first game pitching a shutout. Let's hear him pitch to Lee Walls in the bottom of the ninth inning with two down. So with the count one and one on Lee Walls, Lee backs away. Doesn't want Pierce to quick pitch him, and Pierce backs off the rubber now. Two down, bases empty, Giants six, Dodgers four, bottom of the ninth. Pierce winds. Here's the pitch. A line drive to center. This could be it. Mays waiting. He's got it. The Giants win the pennant. The Giants have won it as Mays. Pierce is mobbed by the Giants. They won it six to four on a dramatic four-run rally in the ninth. The Giants are going crazy down there. Well, see what I told you, Russ? The Giants did win the pennant. You know, I believe after all they did, that must have really been something in that clubhouse. I'd like to remember it myself. I can't. Shall we listen into a bit of the clubhouse? All right, where is Al? Right here, right here. Oh, fine. Here's our great manager, Alvin Dark. <laughs> Alvin, you had it all the way, didn't you? Well, I'll tell you, the fellows just showed me more and more and more that they just bounce back when they want to and have to. They've done this all year long. And, uh, Alvin, turn around yes. here so we can catch it on the camera. Too. Alvin, we were just talking about the ball players. the fact that all year long they've been bouncing back. It looked like they've been beaten, and all of a sudden they bounce back day after day. Lon, you have convinced me. The Giants did win the pennant in 1962. What else do you have for us? Only this, Russ. Remember 51, 54, and 62. That means there will be more and more unpredictable thrills from the San Francisco Giants in years to come.